is I needed to have my hair this long because of one of our next guests. I need to rival him. That is Enosaurus. <laughs> See, like it's like you know, I I'm I'm mimicking it, you know, the best. I, I was can. gonna say we're 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 converging. <laughs> <laughs> I can't pull it off like you though. This is like this is my PL seven hair. I'm getting shorter of... and you're getting longer, and we're converging. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I mean, there's a there's a photo of me from college uh, dressing up as Bill Nye for Halloween, and it is like this. It's so much. Oh it is, man, I was the unreal. um, I was Bob Ross. Oh my God, oh, that's so good. I should I should have done my Bob peak. I just that was my peak, it. or that or Kenny G. Oh yeah, well, yeah. well there you go. Um, you just held a note the entire time. I'm sorry, I can't talk to you. I'm just <laughs> holding onto a note for 45 minutes. Uh, I made yeah, a little you... fake uh, uh, alto sax. <laughs> yeah, uh, and I kept doing that song. <laughs> oh my God, that actually would be like a good college halloween costumes where if you can some way like funnel beer into it oh just right. like i'm sorry i'm just drinking beer the entire time <laughs> oh that would be so good uh but uh but all right speaking of whiskey or you know, alcohol in some way we've got michael Simeon, <laughs> who i believe had a beer and baseball podcast for a moment yes we it. did but uh it created some bad habits so i needed to stop it <laughs> now, you, now you drink out of the coffee mug yeah there now i drink T. <laughs> you actually, if I remember correctly, you have a mug. Maybe not this one, but the other one. I have the Is PitchCon it, one. You have this exact PitchCon mug. Mm -hmm. Oh, you're the best, man. Yeah, there are two. Yeah. You get, you know, we have this one. We also have the the text one. Oh, uh, okay. I, I yeah, I collect mugs. Yeah, they're oh, fun. Man. Well, I'm touched that you got one. Uh, I'm excited <laughs> that that both of you are here because, I mean, like I say often with PitchCon, I made it because I just wanted to talk and hang out with all of y'all. And what do I do? I say, hey, I want to talk about pictures with SP Streamer and Eno. So you know what? I'm just going to make that happen. <laughs> uh, so thank you guys so much for being a part of this. Um, and remember, everybody, we're doing this. We're doing a fundraiser for Feeding America. Go to the site, pitchless.com slash pitchcon. There's a big contribute button there. We're trying to raise $10,000. So if you can, please contribute to the cause. Uh, we are at uh, $3,800 at the moment, which is awesome. It's great. Nice. We're moving on up. But if you want a box of beer curated by that guy, we got to get to 10000 <laughs> So uh, I can't wait for that. Uh, and I'm always a little bit jealous that I can actually win prizes every single year. But uh, one of these days, maybe I'll get one from you, you know, one day. <laughs> uh, but anyway, we're going to talk pictures in this one because, duh. And I kind of wanted to make it a fun thing where you know, obviously we're going to make it fancy related. But guys that are really just dear to our hearts, less of the the brain saying, no, I'm supposed to like this guy. I'm supposed to do, you know, I'm supposed to get that conservative picture at this point because that's a smart thing to do. It's going to be like, you know what? I wish I trusted my gut and in every league took Musgrove instead of at 48, but at 38 last year. I want to hear about those guys from you. And we're going to go through NFBC BC ADP. And just kind of go into buckets about in these sections who our gut is saying like i love this guy so we're going to just jump straight into this in the top 50. Uh, michael from you who is the guy that you love uh yeah this was hard because there's a lot of good pitchers at this point in the draft obviously but uh i went with aaron nola um mm. i just think he's still being taken a little too late i mean obviously all the underlying metrics call for better season but i'm kind of thinking maybe the change with how they kept changing the ball maybe that was kind of hurting nola in terms of finding his command um you know is clearly an issue and i think lack of command really hurts nola because he relies on getting whiffs high in the zone and cold strikes at the bottom of the zone um with his fastball and I had him rostered on several teams last season. I know a lot of people were burned by him, so like they don't even want to look at him right now. Um, but it, I felt like it was weird because in a lot of games, he started off really, really good. Like he was going, it was like in the third inning, he had like six strikeouts already and no one runs. Then all of a sudden he would kind of fall apart. And um, so I, I feel like something is there that kind of, um, I guess, altered what he was trying to do. And like he did mention, too, that he was struggling and like trying to push through it at times instead of trying to like mix things up a little bit as well. So I think he's right there. And then I think, too, from a fantasy um, perspective, he has a really high floor. Like even if he puts up a high three ERA, you know, you're getting 180 to 200 innings from him and you're getting over 200 strikeouts. 
And so even if he doesn't perform at that high level, he's still bringing you a lot of value. Yeah, the volume is huge there. Yes. Uh, and and also the, the 112 whip is something I think a lot of people forget about with Aaron Nola was that that's still really good <laughs> despite all the home runs and the increased fly ball rates across his pitches. Hopefully that does change. Uh, but yeah, I mean, Aaron Nola, you say Aaron Nola to me, I'm like, well, yeah. I know. <laughs> oh my God. Live every day like it's Nola day. Please make it truly feel that way in yes. 2022. I would absolutely adore that. Uh, Eno plus over here. I uh, who is your guy? <laughs> That's a remnant from my podcast earlier today, DVR, DVR. Um, but uh, <laughs> uh, I'm glad I, I did two uh, per per thing. So I, I could get screwed still. I didn't do three, but I did two per thing. And Nola was one of them. Nice. Um, <laughs> and uh, the one thing I, I just wanted to add that I think is intriguing, and I don't actually know which way uh, to read it, um, is that last year Nola's release point went up. And the ride on his four seam went up. Um, and and he's always had this kind of like, am I a full bore sinker guy or am I a sinker and four seam guy? And I kind of, this is a little bit more narrative than than like actual numbers. I kind of think like his ideal fastball mix might still be out there. Like I think there might be a year where he like really figures out how to get ride on the four seam and sink on the sinker at the same time. And, uh, and, and really like kind of shoves. I mean, he's, He's always going to be like, I like the floor thing. He's always going to be good, but I, I do think there's a peak season in there. Yeah, um, cool. And I'm, 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 I hope that we didn't see a peak season for my pick uh, last year, but uh, Julio Urias is my mm-hmm. pick. Um, you know, he's uh, going as the 11th pitcher uh, in, in NFBC right now, uh, but the ADP of 36, I've got an eighth in my ranks. And uh, the reason for me is that new curveball uh, was just really great. The new curveball they brought, I think Alex Fast uh, kind of pointed it out to me, but uh, it got a, what is this? I know you like CSW. Uh, <laughs> it got a 34 CSW last year on the full season. Um, it's it's his best pitch by Stuff Plus. That's my number. I got a 130 on it. It's one of the best curveballs oh, man. in baseball wow. all of a sudden. It's like a top three curveball in baseball all of a sudden. Um, and what I see with him is just, he's got, uh, we always knew he had uh, command. We, you know, now he's got the stuff to match it really. Uh, and then the thing has always been like, Oh, but what about the innings and are they going to shackle him? I think the shackles are off, man. I think he's mm-hmm. a, he's a mid career veteran. I know that he won't win 20 games again necessarily. Cause it's kind of hard to project wins, but I think he'll win like 17, you know, and I think he'll maybe add more innings than he had last year. And I think he'll be typically excellent. So um, I've been really happy because I'm not a big uh, first round pitcher guy. I've been really happy in a lot of leagues to catch him in the third. And yeah. you give me Urias in the third. I feel like, man, I got two bats and Urias. I'm mm-hmm. I'm flying. I'm ready to go. Mm-hmm. The, uh, the most inter- interesting thing to me about Urias this past year um is i've been i was saying the entire year man i just wish his change up was that big whiff pitch it used to be mm-hmm. you know swing strike rate went down to 17 percent, and in the past we've seen like 20 percent in 2019 um and i was oh man it's just not quite as amazing the csw was 24 percent. uh but the thing i was undervaluing is how good the results were um sub 200 batting average allowed on the change up is ridiculously good uh, considering that we've seen like 250 and 300 was the 220 mark, uh, 2020. That's interesting. For, uh, What's your uh, CSW for his curveball actually? Uh, for the curveball, I have it at uh, 34.5. This is using our inside edge hmm. data. Yeah, we got different uh, numbers. I wonder. I yeah, wonder it's. Why. Pro- I don't. Inside edge uh, versus Statcast might be the different part there. Yeah. I. Uh, but I yeah I think the changeup is a I think it's a really good pitch I don't I wouldn't call him like a two pitch guy so well right exactly yeah. I, I was underrating that in season I think a little bit uh, was how good the changeup actually performed um, it's not like that, that swing strike percentage isn't bad necessarily either no of course not and I was yeah. just thinking like there might be even another level if he turns that into a whiff pitch again. gotcha uh, mm. but we'll see I mean you're completely right just this is for 185 innings and was phenomenal he had some starts where. His fastball wasn't performing that well, and that kind of messed him up. But otherwise, his fastball's just been great all the year, save mm-hmm. for those little blips. So, and I'm amazing. Really myself and he's a thinking... he's a labrum guy. Mm. He's a slap. He's like mm. a, a a real deep surgery on that shoulder guy. Where, um, you know, I was just talking to Cabo the other day, and he was like, you know, that injury right there, 
five, even five years ago, people were like, you're done. You right. know, 10 wow. years ago, you know, you like, that was the last time you pitched. So hopefully <laughs> the 185 innings holds up. Uh, yeah. For another year then. But I, I originally had him outside the top 10. I was like, oh yeah, I'm probably not going to buy into this, uh, this high. And then I found myself, oh no, wait, I, I think I have him at number nine <laughs> right now. For I have him at eight, just like, you know, well, mm. you know what? The reason <laughs> is because my guy is the obvious one. You guys already know who my, my the one I love is. It's my boy, Sandy Alcantara, mm. who is just an absolute joy. And I have him at eight currently. Uh, and I'm even, there's a part of me that's even tempted to put him at the very last person of that top tier, right below DeGrom for me. Because I see someone who's going to go 200 innings uh, for the Marlins. Might not get the wins, and that's probably why I have him a tier underneath. But the fact that he increased the slider to 31% in that second half and then just soared, essentially a 30% strike rate doing that. You know, I was at the beginning of the year last year talking about him and discount Wheeler, um, the way that's just an overpowering fastball that is upper 90s and is going to carve up outs, essentially. Uh, but then needs to figure out the secondary stuff. And then Wheeler said, cool, I, I think I'm going to use a slider more and effectively. And then had his season. And then Alcantara was like, oh. I can do that too. And then he did it and pulled back the change up, which was already a good pitch just being overused, I think. And we saw him just soar. He really was just two starts against the Dodgers and the and inside of cores that brought down that brought up his ERA. Without those, it's about like a two five ERA for the year. It's kind of crazy. Uh, so I think Alcantara is acting like a first, second round starter and is going right before Aaron Nola at the moment do you think that two month sample is long enough to believe in that pitch mix change because i remember i yeah okay because i remember i I asked you at PitchCon because i was curious about like how big of a sample do you think a pitcher needs for a pitch mix change to really stick because i know Mm -hmm. a lot of things are incorporated into it um and you said you didn't really know which is true well, as well obviously case, it's one but i guess two yeah. months yeah yeah well it's one where um i'm like for example look at blake snell right blake snell yeah changed what he did did and instantly had success finally getting right. rid of that change up now maybe snell thinks no i fixed my change up now i'm gonna bring it back mm. and we're all gonna groan but i <laughs> but i would imagine with this you saw like right away significant results right. with this especially it strikeout right, yeah. wrong uh, you know, for that to all of a sudden revert um, entering the year this year. Yeah, yeah it's, it's always when I look at the kind of when I look at the stuff and the, the the location numbers, like he was just it was a better pitch. Like he went from yeah. using the inferior fastball to right. a better one. Right. Then the results followed. I mean, I I hate Sandy. I got him ninth. <laughs> <laughs> you hate Sandy? No, I'm just kidding. Don't you dare! No, I don't hate him at all. <laughs> don't you? Dare. I know. I think I hate I hate Sandy too. How could Sandy all of a sudden embrace you know the leather jacket at the end of the movie? It makes no sense. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, it just always always made me upset you know <laughs> oh god anyway uh let's move on to the next bucket we're going to go from the top 50 to 50 through 100 you know we'll start with you this time who is that guy that you just love uh this is happens to be one of my favorite people to talk to in baseball uh mm-hmm. i have talked to him multiple times while he was crying um he was my moment of the year last year um and uh he has the third best curveball in in baseball and he's old is that enough that's who i'm gonna pick too uh, <laughs> <laughs> i don't have a backup <laughs> charlie morton charlie he's morton great. uh is the 37th pitcher off the board uh with a 97 adp mm-hmm and he, I got him 12th right now. Listen, my ranks are still, I'm working them out. Maybe that's aggressive. But one other thing that I wanted to say was that um, when I looked into aging curves for pitchers these days, uh, pitchers these days are aging better. Starting pitchers are aging better. They're retaining their strikeouts longer. Uh, I think it has to do with the fact that uh, uh, spin ages better. We've been, we've been searching for spin, selecting for spin in baseball, and he obviously can spin it. But uh, listen, he broke his leg and threw 95, you know, three, four more pitches after that. So uh, I think he can wake up next year and at least throw 94 plus. And, uh, you know, why if he can, then what's wrong? Yeah, I mean, he's he's thrown. uh, It used to be an injury problem with Morton. He had obviously the, the problems in 2020, but 2019, he threw a ton of innings. 2000, 
uh, ATM, I believe it was 160 then, if I remember correctly. And then obviously last year, you just kind of coasted the, the entire year. The one question I do have about Morden, I mean, the results are great. If he's starting, like you're going to love him. Uh, is if the cutter can actually be, you know, the cutter that we've seen in, in the past. He didn't really need it last year. It was just curveballs and fastballs for the most part. The cutter was there, but it just wasn't really. You know, I'm kind of pointing to Rich Hill, just being like, what if Rich Hill can throw 94? Right? Yeah. There you Does go. Does it matter? Do we need to talk about yeah. the cutter and the splitter? I mean, the splitter is there. <laughs> That's what I'm going to say. Like, he's getting the good results, so it doesn't there, really. There's <laughs> a possible like backup plan that could unlock two if we're worried about some degradation with the other two stuff. With the fastball, then maybe yeah. the cutter can come back. Gotcha. Um, but yeah, we're exactly right. Like he didn't need it. It's just oh, I can't help myself. Like oh, but there's that thing, and maybe that thing will do good things too. Um, Michael, which one's yours? It was Charlie Morton. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, I think I think a lot of people um, are also afraid to take him because of the injury, which doesn't really make much sense to me because it's not like it was an arm injury or a shoulder injury. So um, I feel Just like he, old injury. he should be fine. Yeah, I mean, I, I wrote down since 2018, he's pitched over 580 innings with a 3.28 ERA, 1-1 whip, and a 29 strikeout rate. I mean – What's there Great. not to love there? He has a stuff plus of 112.5, right? You know? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> um, yeah, and I mean, we all know the, the curve's amazing. We love it. Um, ATC has it projected for 3.62 ERA. I mean, he's just, I think he's just going way too far down. And I plan to have a lot of shares of him. I think maybe uh, you're right. Um, like, you could ideally pair him with uh, someone you're not as nervous about innings as your first pick. But, you know, like most of <laughs> oh, yeah right like and most of us would rather pick a guy we're not nervous about innings as our first pick right so yeah. morton is like a really good number two i think yeah there you go yeah just don't pair him with the grom that might yeah right that's, that's, yeah that's definitely the only one. <laughs> uh but i uh, you know so i think i'm gonna go with dylan cease i'm just kidding uh mm. trevor trevor rogers is the one that i'm all for um i, I i'm a huge believer in his fastball uh i watched a lot of them as the success on that heater is just such a good foundation in some ways reminded me of Woodruff in the sense of the, uh, you know, the changeup is really good, but it's not this elite changeup quite yet. Um, the slider still needs some work, but when it gets, you know, it gets strikes, that's great. And we think of Woodruff, it's just like, yeah, it's a fastball. That's really good. But you know, the slider and the, and the changeup, not really this overwhelming stuff, but it gets the job done. I kind of see that with Trevor Rogers from the left side. Mm -hmm. Um, and the, the second half of Rodgers is obviously not what you want. Didn't have a single start of six innings uh, after the end of June. But there was a lot of personal stuff going on with yep. him. There was a lot of out of rhythm. Uh, and I think the fastball is still really good. So I see a guy that can just kind of coast with Miami. Had a ton of innings this past year. And you know Miami. Look at Alcantara. They'll just let them pitch. Uh, yeah. And that's I would love to have two Miami pitchers to start my drafts. But that's kind of... <laughs> Uh, what I'm okay with considering Rodgers could be just a fantastic ratio guy across the board, 25% plus strikeout rate. And with volume, you know, a lot of those guys you get excited about uh, have more volume questions, I think, than Trevor Rodgers does. Um, and the other guy that is also there is another lefty, which is very similar to me, is Max Freed, um, mm -hmm. who's at 71 right now. I mean, I love all of these guys. Jack Flaherty, I think, is phenomenal too. And it's why, like, Joe Musgrove? Alec Manoa, I'm sorry. Okay. I almost picked Musgrove. <laughs> I almost oh, picked Musgrove. I mean, you guys sure. can talk about any of those that you want if you want to do a second one in this grouping. But, I mean, Max Reed, I think, just had two straight seasons of a 109 whip, which you can't overlook. Um, oh, yeah. a much better fastball. The slider hasn't, like, turned into the whiff pitch that I wanted it to be. We had hints of it when he first came up in that second half. And I kind of mm -hmm. want it to be that, to push the strikeouts over 25% uh, comfortably. But the curveball, I think, got a little bit better last year. And... There's, you know, there's still more time for development even for Max Reed. Yeah. He's just going to be a rock. But I mean, even if he doesn't up that strikeout rate, there's still nothing yeah. wrong with him. Again, he's just a really good ratio stabilizer for you for fantasy. Is there anyone else you want to talk about, Eno? I was just looking up uh, Rogers' second half hmm. slider if it lost a bunch of spin rate. Hmm. Um, hmm. I just know that uh, he's been finicky. That that slider is finicky. I would, I would really, I would love to just know that the slider was a good pitch. But um, uh, well, he, he locates it well, though. Yeah. And location can be everything. I mean, yeah. Yeah. He yeah. just needs it to get strikes is the thing. Like it, he has the change up in the fastball to, to put guys away. 
He had a really good CSW on that pitch, huh? Yeah, he did. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, Rogers in my model. My Rogers in my model looks like a slightly above average pitcher. Uh, well, that's good. I'll take. I'll take. I'll take above hmm? average. It loves his changeup. It does not like hmm. a slider. All uh, right. But let's move on to the uh, the next. Uh, let's go next fifty here. Hundred to. Oh, hey, uh, I see yes. a picture right there. Uh, a question right there on Darvish. Darvish was my uh, my backup plan. Oh, that was mm -hmm. your second one. Yeah, Darvish was my so, second one. So why do you love Darvish? You know. Well, I, I I I have here in my notes that there was some reduction in spin in the second half. You know, um, due to something that someone had something to do with. <laughs> um, and uh, but uh, strangely. Um, and I, I'm not casting aspersions anywhere. Uh, the spin came back. Mm, so yeah, uh, by the end of the season, uh, I say his last three starts, he had a 110 stuff plus. So I think he, he, I think he figured out what he needed to figure out. Um, uh, but the K's are there for sure. Uh, I have him right now. It's maybe he's going to drop a little bit, but I have him like 20, 22nd. He's going off the board as a 38th pitcher, uh, at a 98 ADP. And you know the K's will be there. The one thing is he's had that, you know, 1.39 or 1.35 mm. homers per, per nines in the juice ball era. Um, and that one standout year where he was so great, it was like the homers that disappeared. And homers are kind of like the noisiest stat. So, uh, you know, maybe I see like a guy with like a 3.9 ERA, but also like 200 strikeouts, you know? Like, right. So his strikeout rate stuck? Yeah, that second half. Okay. Yeah, that's kind of like Cole. People were worried about Cole because his spin rate was kind of going down, but he kept the strikeout rate and everything. Everyone thought maybe the sticky stuff, but well, he also I feel adjusted like... how he pitched Cole. It was mm. he, he was throwing a lot more changeups. So. Yeah, that's true. And that was annoying. I was like, dude, what are you, what are you doing? But it turned out, <laughs> ironically, the sticky stuff thing to me. Uh, there were some players that that definitely uh, saw a reduction in stuff. There, we saw in our model like a reduction of league average stuff. So like the sticky stuff enforcement reduced league average stuff. Right. So right. like that was that was something we were kind of amazed of when we looked in the model. But I think in the end it ended up hurting a lot of the command guys the most. Really? Um, so I think you Darvish was hurt by it because he lost his command more than anything. Yeah. Interesting. I mean, the I mean, guy can cutters, spin it. I was looking into hmm. his cutter a little bit, and that's like where all the homers came from. Like Darvish, you, like leans on that so heavily. I need a strike. It's going to be a cutter. It's going to yeah. be a cutter. Mm. They just floated too many of them a lot. Maybe just didn't have the same kind of movement along yeah. the way. But that's the thing I'll be looking at the most with Darvish is like, how is the cutter performing? Is that still allowing long balls or not? Yeah. Um, early on. I. Uh, but let's move on into the uh, into the 100s here. So 100 to 150. I. Uh, Mike, we'll start with you. Yeah, I, I think it's funny before this, Nick, you said that they were like exciting players and I feel like I keep picking boring ones, but uh, I'm going to go with Chris Bassett. I mean, so boring, so boring, but I feel like he's good, great where he's get, uh, being taken based on ADP. Um, obviously, he has had really good seasons the last three seasons. Um, he did miss some time because he got hit in the face, um, but he did come back and pitch well. So I felt like that was a good sign there. Um, yes, he continuously overperforms his underlying metrics. So I feel like people might think there's a little, you know, maybe the cliff is looming there, kind of like what happened to Hendricks last season. Um, but people can do that for years. So um, who really knows at that point? Um, but in terms of pitch mix, I mean, he throws five pitches over 10% of the time. The sinker at a 34 CSW rate. Um, you know, the four seam was pretty good at getting whiffs. Uh, I, feel, I just feel like his arsenal is really good at what it's meant to do almost. Um, and then plus he had a, a CSW rate over 30% in three out of the five months. He had a sub three array in three out of the five months. So I just feel like he's not a league winner, but again, someone who could give you that really nice floor that could be useful. And I think because he's somewhat, I guess, boring, he's being taken really late in drafts. Yeah. It's definitely a point in the draft where it's a minefield in the sense of you could feel so good about a guy. And there are so many reasons why it won't work in 2022. And Bassett certainly is someone it's it's a weird kitchen sink approach of you have a sinker that gets a ton of called strikes and mm -hmm. doesn't allow all the yeah. bombs and all the damage that you would normally expect. You have a four seamer that I was completely blind to, uh, and that gets strikeouts. It's why he's yeah. really above twenty percent, and it's what I just it didn't make sense to me, <laughs> and I I hate that I overlooked it for so long. 
Um, and that, that to me has brought me back a bit. I think it had something crazy, like a 15% swing strike rate or something like that. It was high. Um, yeah. It's, it was it's high. really cool to see that. Um, but then uh, the other stuff, like the change up, the cu the cutter, the curveball are all kind of like, just exist there. But, yeah. Uh, They're it, just like around. Like, hey, my model <laughs> likes the curveball, dude. My model says the curveball is his best pitch by stuff. What? That slow really? ass 75 mile an hour curveball. <laughs> it likes that pitch. <laughs> I don't I don't exactly know why, but it might have something to do with the fact that it's 75 and his fastball is 94. So wow. that's a pretty that's a oh, pretty yeah, right. big velocity pretty big gap the you biggest cover. thing, right? Yeah, velocity differential was huge in the model. So uh and another thing that uh, that there's a kind of a cool uh discussion up today. Um uh a guy from Driveline is talking about um how the kind of lower three quarters guys that still get good ride uh actually are some of the best fastballs in the yeah. in the league and that includes yeah. like the grom kind of has that kind of weird but edwin diaz is there and like there are all these guys that kind of these lower arm slots the release point is under 5.75 feet but the the vertical movement uh is above average and bassett is on that list and yeah, i saw that today. it's funny he's like talking you know publicly about how you know he doesn't have great spin rate and analysts don't like his pitch but i'm, I'm uh, like I'm like, dude, I'm right here. I've talked to you like three times all year, four times about your stuff <laughs> metrics and how my stuff metrics love your stuff. Like, what are you talking about? There's analytics right in front of you talking about how, you know, how good your pitches are. <laughs> the one thing is like, if he moves away from Oakland, right? I think some right. of that home run suppression on the sinker might go mm -hmm. away. But I kind of look at that, that curveball stuff plus and say, what if he moves away to someone like a better pitching coach? Mm hmm. And That's someone's like, hey, let's let's mix in more of those curveballs. Yeah. yeah, definitely. And there's I, I like a, a slightly different version of Bassett out there. So correct me if I'm wrong. What you're talking about with the release point stuff um, goes into what Chamberlain talked about yesterday with a vertical approach angle. Yeah, 100%. Um, and uh, it is, you know, I didn't think about it then, but I'm thinking about it now. Correct me if I'm wrong. That essentially is saying, hey, shorter pitchers should be better now in some facet. Cal Quantrill actually told me in an interview, I wish I was shorter and had like that release that gives you all that ride. I wish I could be that guy. I'm not that guy. So wait, so my height now is a bad thing? <laughs> <laughs> no, no I will not man. adhere to this. Do not listen to VAA. It's a horrible <laughs> snap. Everybody um, wants to be really Joe cool. Ryan. We gotta, we gotta tell Stroman about this. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I was just gonna say he Stroman. He's all those sinkers. He's not quite, he's doing a different thing. Right, but maybe he becomes more of a four seam guy now, right? Um, <laughs> But uh, but that that's a that's a great call there with Bassett. Uh, you know who do you have? Oh man, I I have <laughs> two two names here that I have a, like an absolute Woody for, and <laughs> I can't choose between these two guys. <laughs> uh, I will leave one because maybe you're more likely to take him. We'll see. I have uh, four, so go huh? both. Go yeah, both, four. four. <laughs> nice. Okay. Uh, Zach Gallen uh, mm -hmm. is, uh, you know, I had 108 stuff for him in 2020, 108 stuff for him in 2021. I don't think this stuff was the problem last year. Uh, location was better in 2020. And in when we did this research, we found that location and command stats are not as sticky year to year as stuff. That's why we adhere to the stuff. That's why we look at fastball velocities. We why we look at uh, swing strike rates. That's why we look at, at pitch mixes and stuff like that. So uh, I think the location went away when he had the like slight, uh, like the, the fracture in his, he even said he couldn't like throw his curveball. He also became a little bit more predictable in that uh, when he fell behind in counts, he just went to the fastball. I think when he has better command of the breaking pitch, he's going to throw some breaking pitch in, mm -hmm. in those counts to get back in. Um, and yeah, he went four seam heavy, didn't he? Yeah. He, he I don't like, and nowhere. the four seam, my model likes the four seed, but if you're predictable, you know, right. Yeah. Everyone knows we'll where, where you're coming yeah. from. So, yeah. um, uh, his changeup got better last year, uh, by stuff plus anyway, I've, uh, he goes 52nd off the board with a one forty eighty P I have him 30 seconds. So that's yeah. a big, big mm -hmm. difference. And, uh, go team Zach gallon. Yeah. I mean, he, uh, increases the fastball by 16 points. Uh, from like 39 to 55. Yeah. I yeah, think it's a lot. a lot. He hurt yeah. himself swinging in spring training. I think he was yeah. just, oh, God. I think he was just dealing with that all year. Arrive. Yeah. Uh, the interesting thing to me, and this is something this off season, I've started to focus on a lot more for whatever reason. It's just the most convincing thing that I want to dive more into. But looking at just strike rates in general of pitches, 
just to get a general mm. sense of how effective they are. Like, if you're not getting strikes with a pitch, like, oh, yeah, maybe your walk rates will go up and you have to throw worse pitches then because you're in behind the count and you don't want to walk guys. And the strike rates for Gallon's, you know, changeup cutter and uh, and curveball have always been above 60%. You know, two of those, the curveball and changeup, 65% in 2020. All three of those were under 60% last year in strike rate, mm. which is below average. That's like when I, I start seeing that and go, oh, no, this is not good. And that's, but it's also I mean, just weird it. for him in his history, right? Like, yeah, oh, absolutely. his whole deal it's as like a prospect coming up was the guy has command, but does he have stuff, you know? Right. Yeah. And so it, it's very abnormal. Um, you see the 9% walk rate. I'm like, I don't think that's actually like the real Zach Gallon. Yeah. Uh, so I'm all for this. I, I think it's also just you know, a feeling thing. He had, got injured and then he was trying to get back into it. Then he had the hamstring. And it's just, you know, he's always been also a health guy who had volume in him. And this is the first weird season he's had. Yeah. So give him a full off season of health and getting back into rhythm. I Maybe think never swing again. There. Yeah. Never swing yeah, again. Seriously. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah. So you're a gal and gal just like don't me. Move. You know, yeah. it's good to hear. <laughs> who was the second guy? Uh, Shane Boz. I don't, oh, yeah. I don't, I don't even have to like, do I have to go, <laughs> do I have to say well, anything? I guess I'll attack the one thing that, that I think people makes people nervous because, uh, you know, it, it, it's beautiful. Look at like, when I look at his stuff plus page, I cry. Um, <laughs> but, uh, he's going as a 50th pitcher. I have him as 37 and I know, and it's mostly just because of the thing that everyone's worried about, which is in it. But, um, uh, he got to like a hundred and was it 120 last year. 120 95 last year with the postseason. I think he can get to 125. That's not exactly what you want, but I think we have to recalibrate. 200 is there's like three of those guys every year now, mm -hmm. right? So 180 is the new 200. So, you know, I think that 125 is the new 150. I know that I'm going to have to manage him. I know that there'll be days where I'm like, damn, he's on my bench and what do I do? What do I do? But I think the upside is so big that I'm going to take the 125 innings. I think they're going to be great innings. I mean, what you saw from yep. Shane McClanahan last year is pretty much the, the blueprint, I think, yep. of the Rays. That's what I was thinking, up. yeah. Yep. You yeah. know, it's even like the same way of McClanahan made his debut in the postseason um, in 2020. Uh, and that's pretty much what Boz did. Yeah. Uh, and it, what it does mean, though, is that if you are drafting, especially like a 12-teamer, if you're drafting Boz, yeah, it's going to be like three weeks at the beginning of the year. And it's going to be really hard because you won't have any – you won't be like the Rays. Be like, hey, Rays, so is it on Tuesday? <laughs> is it coming up? You know, you got to sit there and just be like, I know it, Rays. Like, come on, I know. bring them up, right? Mm -hmm. and it's it, going to be and tough. It, and it goes hand in hand with one of my weaknesses in NFBC, which is bench management. Right. Where, you know, I do run out of space. However, you know, I nursed Shane Bieber all year last year and won the league uh, anyway. So I kind of feel like you're just going to have one or two spots on your bench. That's that pitcher you're nursing along. And I think it's OK if their upside is good as Baz uh, to do that at the beginning of the season. All I'm hearing here is I benched Shane, ba uh, Shane Bieber for the second half of the year and I still won my league. It's kind of a weird flex. <laughs> uh, I'm going to go on from it. I'm going to go with the other Ray. Did you guys drop him? I mean, I uh, I don't think I had Shane Bieber last year. because I had no shares player. also. Yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, I dropped the Grom in July of one league or something when he was – That made sense. It was looking bad. I was like, I'm, I don't expect this. That's so yeah. painful, though. It's I the know. worst. Because the they're always like, oh, in two weeks we'll know more. And you're like, no, nope, I'm out. Tell me now <laughs> that he's going to lose the yeah. season so I can drop him. Right. He provided uh, you so much value. It didn't matter anyway. So I'm going to I'm going to stick with inside of the Shane pool here and go with McClanahan. I uh, I absolutely adore his slider and his curveball. Uh, they're both excellent strike pitches. CSW pitches with 30. Uh, what was it? Sorry. 43% CSW on the curveball, which is crazy. 16% nice. usage last year. I wouldn't be surprised if the Rays go back and go, yeah, throw that a little bit more um, <laughs> and instead of 16%. Uh, the fastball was the real problem. Uh, high batting average allowed on that. Just got hit a little too hard. I think that that can be adjusted uh, a bit. Now, I, I do wonder if there's something I'm not seeing about how good his fastball actually is, even though it's this 96-plus velocity. Um, there might be something telling that says, yeah, this actually will get hit a little bit harder than usual. Still, I see a guy who's essentially the the old Cleveland Guardian pitcher um, in a filthy slider and a curveball and just does not, you know, needs to avoid the damage on the fastball. Uh, a 127 whip last year is just not who he is. 
Uh, I see someone who also had the, the first season of the race, and literally there's no one else in Tampa Bay. All the concerns. Yeah, he's like about their volume the guy. Yeah. Yeah. The, the concerns about the innings, but are they going to let him go? I think the Rays last year eased them in and then pushed them up to six in the middle of the season and saw, oh, we're like 10 games ahead in the AL East. Let's slow you down now. Back. And we had yeah. that bell curve, and I expect that crest to stick around um, through the year now. So Where do you I, have him ranked, Nick? A huge fan. Uh, I have him inside the top 30. Um, Same. I have, like, I have a tier of like all the ones I really like, like the Alc Manoa and so on. And then I have the injury crop of like Carlos Rodon and Zach Gallon and stuff. Mm, so I will not touch Rodon. Dude, yeah, I got Shane 22 right refuse. now. Refuse. Yeah, you do. There it is. Uh, he's so good. Yeah. He's so good. I mean, there are other guys. I, that I, I do I see that thing that you were talking about with the fastball, though, dude. And I, yeah, and it, I, it got hit hard. Yeah. I wonder that, about him in terms of like, you know, I, I like wonder the ride about should help it, though. What the Rays thought they had with him. You know, mm -hmm. maybe they thought they had a reliever. And that they, maybe they're nervous that like it'll get even hit even harder when it's ninety three. Maybe he's not the best sort of dynasty asset, but interesting. He's young and in charge right now, so I'm not. <laughs> yeah. I'm not. I'm I'm all on board right now. Um, someone else I considered in this. I know you've mentioned a little bit about like, kind of the confusion of figuring him out. Is Ian Anderson? Mm. I I think Ian Anderson is only going to get better. Um, he's still twenty three, uh, and is going to be twenty four. I believe in May this year uh, with a fastball change of combination and a curveball that actually had 13 whiffs against the Marlins uh, for a start this year. I know it's the Marlins, but at least there's that potential kind of like how you talk about max exit velocity showcasing ability once, you know, uh, but the fastball change of combo, I think has so much potential to it and he's just hard to hit. That's all he's shown um, in the time that he's had. Atlanta's going to need him the entire year now. I think, you know, barring health, uh, Ian Anderson can really blossom in twenty. I just don't know where the strikeouts are going to come from, though. You think he has oh, strikeout man. upside to him? Oh, absolutely. Uh, I mean, I, 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 see the, the I see the four-seamer as being a bigger swing striker pitch over time. Yeah. Um, and especially with that changeup that is super hard to hit. Um, and a curveball that has those flashes. I think there's just a lot of development to be had. He's he's got me. I did a whole presentation at the World Pitching Congress about how Ian Anderson is making me question my model, or not necessarily question my model, but Ian Anderson represents stuff that's not in the model. You know? Yeah, because he's ranked low in stuff plus, right? Yeah, stuff plus gives his. It says it's a below average changeup, and says he has below average stuff. But I think what they're missing is um, what we're missing is that, you know, Devin Mesoraco said this to me that Ian Anderson comes over the top so extreme over the top with that side, bend, like that, that back bend to kind of give you really yeah. extreme over the top. Mm -hmm. He says you can't see pronation in the wrist the same way up there. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I think that there was a study in, in cricket where they found that pre-release information was more important than post-release information hmm. for batters. What? That's um, interesting. And so Ian Anderson, that's like a really untapped because like stuff is all post-release. Because I don't, right, right, right. What do I have? I was gonna say, how can we measure before the release? We, we can. <laughs> what kind of metric well, can yeah, we? Yeah, Hawkeye stuff. Can Hawkeye. Do like a <laughs> Pose estimation. So we'll get mm. from Hawkeye. We'll get some angles on the on the arm. We'll get some hand speed, hopefully, some arm oh speed stuff. Wow. Um, and uh, that could be take a real step forward. People think of biomechanics as like mostly being about throwing harder and staying healthy. But they're this new sort of wing of biomechanics, the, the third wing, which is uh, how does biomechanics relate to di deception and, yeah. and stuff and right. outcome, uh, output. So I think Ian Anderson's right there where you're like, uh, yeah, the change of looks bad. Like, even if you look at the stack ass movement profile or like you look at the numbers, you're like, just why like, is this eh. a good pitch? And right, right. I think it's mostly they just can't see it. And they have oh, that, yeah. that pronation that, you know, sometimes babying arm or, you know, you're kind of slow through or something, hmm. or, or you, you turn your wrist a different way. You see more fingers or something. Like, there's some sort of clue to a lot of people's change ups, and it's just not there for you and Anderson. That that's so fascinating. Uh, yeah, that's crazy. I'm excited to watch all that develop and see how we understand pitches once again on another level. Yeah. Uh, I think also a major question I have is there's a world pitching Congress. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Next year, next year, come on out, dude. Uh, dude. Yes. When is it? <laughs> yeah. It's in, in February in, in St. Louis. So it's a, it's just like being at the beach. Oh, that sounds great. <laughs>
That sounds amazing. <laughs> um, all right, we're going to move on to the next crop of 50 here. Uh, 150 to 200. Who do you guys have? We'll start with you, Eno. Oh, let me get my uh, notes up here. Uh, let me adjust my monocle. Um, I got one guy, but uh, I'm going to really swim move past him to the other guy. Yeah. John Means, baby. Yes! Okay. Yeah. Yes! <laughs> Uh, our, our model always liked him. Uh, it really likes his, his curve ball. So, you know, which is kind of surprising. Uh, people think about the changeup, but it likes his change up a lot. Uh, even says his slider is an above average pitch and it says his four seam is average. So Great. it's not like he's not, thinking he's a bad fastball guy. It's an average. It's, it's good enough. Um, he did have some second half stuff after the sticky stuff enforcement. Uh, his slider kind of was a little bit more erratic, but I wouldn't say looking at, uh, his post sticky stuff, like that, it was like obviously he's no good after sticky stuff. So, um, uh, I think that uh, then you throw in the ballpark dimensions, uh, being changed, yeah. that's that's really going to help him because, uh, righty, where you're uh, you're going to have some guys guessing and he gives up homers to that area. I don't know, I can mm -hmm. I can try to explain it with his approach and his stuff, but like. I mean, lefty, lefties, righties taking him to the left park, right? Like that's where they would, if they're early on the changeup or something, or they guess right, they can. Apparently, he gave up six homers to that part of the wall that the, that's no longer going to be there. Hmm. Um, wow. So you know, I think, uh, yeah, uh, John means business. There we go. You gotta say it every time. Every time. Thank you so much, Saber Two. Uh, Simeon, who do you have? Uh, I was gonna go with Jordan Montgomery. Um, no I know. There. I know the fastball is uh, a little scary at times, but um, really got to love the the breaking pitches. Um, you know, I love the way the curveball drops super late. Um, both had swing strike percentages over 20%. Um, both induce a lot of weak contact. So I think there there's a lot there. And then he started also to have a pitch mix change where he started going to the breaking balls more last year, as opposed to the fastballs, which again, aren't that great. <laughs> um, but yeah, and I thought um, it was super interesting. So from July 22nd on, he had 12 starts with a three, two, four ERA. And in nine of those 12 starts, he only allowed one run or fewer. Um, one of those starts though, I think he did get blown up for like seven runs, but whatever. Um, so yeah, so I think he's making steps towards, you know, I feel like every year he's kind of improving. Plus, you know, he plays for a really good organization who I think can um, get the most out of him. Um, so yeah, I like Jordan but he's Montgomery. Like, it, I love him because he's the opposite of the normal Yankee pitcher. Normal mm. Yankee pitcher comes yeah. up, throws 99 at the top of the zone, has a crazy breaking ball. You know, you're wondering about his third pitch, has no command. Then you got Jordan Montgomery throwing 91 with command of like three or four pitches. And you're like, oh, because this is different. <laughs> I, I like it. And he's had more success than a lot of their homegrown guys, you know, yeah. and he's tamed that beast of a park. Like I, that, that's the only thing that makes me nervous. Like I like Ty on last year. You know, I still think mm -hmm. he's, he's got decent stuff, but that going from Pittsburgh to that park is like going to Coors Field or something. Yeah, uh, for Montgomery, yeah, as you mentioned, uh, Simeon, I mean, he has a four-seamer that gets hit, sinker that gets yeah. hit, <laughs> yeah. a cutter that he tried <laughs> to, like, mix in there, that gets yeah. hit. Yeah. But it's a change-up and curveball. And if he's throwing that, you know, I think last year was around 50% of the time it was those two pitches. If he's throwing that closer to 60%, and you can actually really push those usages up, I think that might work, considering he had over 65% strike rates on both of them. Um, mm -hmm. and you know, there were times when he didn't feel comfortable <clears throat> using them through the entire at bat, right? It's kind of hard just being change up curveball, right? You feel like you need something yeah, a little faster at times, you know, otherwise you'll have Eck call you, you're throwing salad or something. Uh, but, uh, you need to, you know, you need to have some speed in there. Hopefully you can find some middle ground to get by, you know, the Kentai Maeda method of sneaking mm -hmm. fastballs or Tanaka did that really effectively too. um, Carrasco and Kluber did in their day too. Uh, the guy I was too nervous to pick we'll was a Yankee, too. Who? Who you got? Severino. Oh, yeah. He's so mm. good, though. Yeah. <laughs> That's extreme, extreme injury risk. So. Yeah. Right. I think it helps I pitched a little bit, though. Yeah, but last year. Like, I was looking at it, and I was like, oh, his stuff, his stuff scores are great. He's back. And then I realized he pitched one inning at a time. So this is like reliever Severino. Right. Yeah, that's right. true. Well, so, uh, it's, it's I'm interesting, still a little though. nervous. You have different sides of that. Like, you have Shane Bieber came back and was not good in those two games. 
But then you right. have Pablo Lopez who yeah, showed up and threw not. like two ticks higher um, across his one game. And at first I was just like, okay, I'm just going to throw all this stuff out. And I'm like, wait a second. There, there clearly is something to grab from there. Zimmerman, Jeff Zimmerman said fastball speeds, uh, you know, coming off the DL, the IL now, sorry. Uh, the fastball speeds coming off the IL, three starts is, is like all the information you're going to get. Oh man, so we only got two from Bieber, and that was really bad. But the, but <laughs> yeah, that means Bieber scares me. Three starts is everything. Two starts is pretty good. Like it does right. tell you something, yeah. right? So I mean, and the command wasn't as good either for Bieber. There, I don't know why I'm talking about Bieber again. I'm gonna bring it back here. <laughs> um, I mean, yeah, as you mentioned, Severino just a huge risk. We know he's he has the talent. We just haven't seen him do it for a season since one like 2017 at this point, something mm. like that. I uh, I hope we do see it. Michael Kopech is mine um mm. it's I, I believe that if chicago says hey yeah we aren't going to assign another person like it's michael kopek uh he shoots up draft spots like a hundred even um i would even say that i'd rather have kopek more than cease if kopek is starting yeah uh, because i just think his i think mm. his fastball and slider are just incredible i actually yeah, think will get a lot more innings guys. i would think what's that i would think cease gets a lot more innings though it, well, he like how many innings? Seven last year in thirty-two starts. How many innings do you think Kopech's gonna get though? 150, 160? It's not like yeah, he I just so. went. He got a. I the way I see it. I'm just afraid they're still gonna kind of play in with the him. Majors for a season, in relief. It's not the same as just throwing the same amount of innings in the minor leagues or something. Right, right. I'm just afraid they're still gonna toy with him a little bit, especially because Ronaldo Lopez fair. Renaissance. Oh, is it though? <laughs> I it's, it's uh, enough of if it's enough of one to be like, hey, we like what we saw out of Lopez last year. He's our fifth star to begin the year. Maybe no, no, don't don't say things like that. You know, don't do that. <laughs> I, I used to be such a big Raylo fan, and I can't I can't go back on that. But I mean, the way I see it, Kopech, when he had that one start, oh, five God. innings, ten strikeouts, yeah, absurdly yeah. dominant. Yeah, uh, I think it would just be nuts for the White Sox to not want this part of their staff, especially with a declining Dallas Keuchel as well. <laughs> Um, being that just like just go away we're converging <laughs> again dude i used to hate lopez and now i'm kind of like uh used to well, love it because, now you're kind of like uh it's, it's because the value has changed right like it's yeah. you know it, it's he's so not nothing that maybe if there was anything yeah I right understand. right right um but uh but yeah with Kobe again it's just he's going at 172 um and if there's any confirmation about him as a starter it just all well i think this is really interesting i i said you know shane boz had 95 last year i think he can get to 125 right and as james shiano's pointing out kopek had 72 last year and you think he can get to like 150 well because it was and but it's different roles because it's different yeah because the roles i think that that as a team like you recognize if you throw yeah 72 innings which were what like 50 or 60 as relief yeah then that's Mm -hmm. different than yeah. than being a starter in in a short amount of time right yeah that's him being a pitcher through the entire year yeah know? well so. i mean teams are still figuring it out i think alex anthopoulos said in a public press conference that they just upped pitchers by 20 percent year over year because that's how other people did it there you <laughs> go that sounds great to me <laughs> more baseball more good pitchers i'm yeah. all for that uh, let's move on to the uh, the top 200 of 250 as we, we're getting close to the air. So we're going to do this. Well, actually, let's extend this. Let's go 200 to 300 and then give someone just way, way deep past 300. Uh, we'll start with you, Michael. From Wait, didn't we to just do 200? 200 to 300. Didn't we just do that? No, we just did 150 to 200. Are you sure? Yeah, well, you did go and jump and jump. I was like, that's close enough to 200. <laughs> oh okay um yeah i i, I read that i clearly did this wrong <laughs> um i did because i did 100 to 200 then 200 yeah that was my bad and 300 probably. and forever yeah okay yeah, i did the same um, thing so it was your bad i was your bad all my fault thing. guys <laughs> i have two post 300 so i'll just go with both i guess um I'll, I'll do that and then the other one after i guess um but i might be stealing one of yours nick i was gonna go with kyle muller um, oh interesting yeah i mean smaller sample but i thought you know, the strikeout rate was pretty decent. Um, I think the whiff rate in that small sample two shows that he has even more strikeout capability there. I think the slider and curveball looked kind of pretty much major league ready. Um, I do think he needs to improve that fastball command a little bit. I don't know if he, I want to assume he'll get into the rotation at some point. Um, it might be a little tough, but um, I, I, I think if he does get in there, he could get you at least, 
some value, especially if you're doing like draft and hold formats or something like that, um, because he's going to pick 520 right now. So um, I think with that upside, it's just it's he's worth a worth a grab that late. Yeah, I mean, I got really excited about Mahler uh, when he first came up because I saw a guy that was yeah, 94 miles per hour with two breaking balls that could miss bats. You know, it wasn't. Yeah, it's very interesting. 30 percent CSW on the curveball, yet just a 50 percent strike rate. So mm. inefficient there, but the slider was a 71 percent strike rate. That was the pitch. 35 percent usage, 34 percent CSW uh, for Mahler's slider, and it's Tucker Davidson right now. I was, I was going to say, I feel like, I mean, well, you I have Soroka right at some point too. Right. I would guess that Muller comes up at some point to fill yeah. in that fifth spot. But yeah, I don't know when, but yeah, I'll be, I'll be excited to see him go again. And as you mentioned, the fastball, we'll see if that can be okay. Uh, who's one from your list, you know? Uh, I've got every draft I've done. I got a share of this guy so far. So uh, Luis Patino. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Man. Uh, yep. I think he's got the Tyler Glass now plan in effect where they're just like, throw it down the middle, let your stuff go. He's mostly a two pitch guy that can be an issue with homers and walks and times through the order and innings, but it's free money where you're getting them. And the way that the Rays work, this is actually not as much of a risk in terms of innings. I don't think as it is a risk in terms of role. I think he might get shuttled mm-hmm. around. He might be a piggyback. He might do weird things. But Definitely. especially in a draft and hold, <laughs> worst case scenario, you're like, eh, you know, Patino's in the big leagues. I'm going to put him in. I don't know if he's going to start this week or he's going to do like a three-inning relief appearance or, you know, what's going on. But I'm betting on the arm, and I think it's special. I mean, yeah. that might be the case of being shorter is better for Patino, the way that fastball's been working. <laughs> Uh, that was the pitch. It was very interesting. I remember watching him or seeing some video. I should not say watching as prospect. That is never what I do. Mm-hmm. I saw maybe a few gifts or something. Of the, <laughs> of the and uh, but, but Patino slider. Anytime I saw it, was always oh, this is the thing. I love this. Yeah. But really, it's the fastball that's taken over. Um, mm-hmm. Over sixty percent usage last year. That was the thing that really made Patino an item. While and he slider, had better CSW. I mean, I know mine are different. His better CSW on the fastball and the slider, right? Yeah, 26.4 on the slider and I believe a 27 or actually 26.6 on the on the on the fastball last year. But uh but the slider sub 60% strike rate, just a 16% swing strike rate is kind of surprising. Um and that could be something that the changes two pitch. gets better. Yeah. People are, or maybe people are anticipating it, but right. the you know my changeup says the you know my my model says the changeup is a ninety stuff plus the sinker is a one hundred eight like I wow. think there could be maybe it could be a two fastball slider guy, hmm. um, you know that exists yeah uh, it's like the old Justin Masterson profile uh, oh that's, that's a, what I want to hear that's <laughs> the real throwback oh man does he have the leg kick too I mean that whole thing and it, it felt like the arm always hurt and got locked into place when he threw like he would lock it up and then throw sidearm it was this weirdest thing oh my god sorry now i'm gonna have nightmares for the next couple hours um, <laughs> he was uh, hurt a lot in related news Justin he was hurt a lot <laughs> um all right uh someone here that i okay i mean someone i've been i want so badly to 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 figure it out is josiah gray um mm. one benefit i mean money both benefits that was guys, but a major one the Nationals are going to trust him as their number three. They trade for him in this way. Uh, there's, I mean, it's Paulo Espino and Josh Rogers outside of this. Like, they're the four and five. Josiah Gray is just going to start through the year. Um, his curveball is ridiculously good. The slider at times is as well. The four-seamer has had games of double-digit whiffs itself. Command is the biggest question. Walker uh, and, and the fastball, I think, too. Yeah, but the, the September yeah. was rough. I mean, we didn't want to start him against the Pirates even. But <laughs> at the end, he had three good starts against the Miami, the Red Sox, and Coors. Um, and I think there's a lot of potential here in Josiah Gray that's just kind of getting pushed to the side at the moment. There could be a One thing that worries me is that I think that the Nationals have maybe the worst pitching development in baseball. Hmm. Huh. <laughs> So let's talk so they about have to be relying Corbin, a lot on the <laughs> yeah, Patrick Corbin. <laughs> what did you say? <laughs> let's talk about Patrick Corbin now. That'd be great. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but that's actually a really good point. I never really considered that with the Nationals, but it makes all the sense in the world. Um, they have they, they just, signed everybody. Yeah, they're just a team that you never really think about with pitching, but they just yeah, that's a really good point. Um, who else is on this list here? I think you guys each had two. 
Uh, Simeon. Yeah, I was going to go with Dane Dunning. Um, hmm. Weird. He's like a more of a command pitcher, but I felt like we didn't really see too much of the command. I don't know, but both of his breaking pitches actually kind of intrigued me. Um, they both had swing and strike rates over 18%. So like there is some kind of um, whiff capability there. Uh, I guess maybe a, might be kind of um, a sequencing type thing with him. I'm not really sure. I mean, they, they both get good movement too on it. So I feel like maybe if he could figure something out there, I know he doesn't throw that hard, but I mean, clearly I think, those breaking pitches show something that something's there. And I think maybe if he could just figure it out, plus pitches in a pretty good ballpark too. Nice. Nice. Yeah. I mean, Dane Dunning, I remember all the hype after 2020 had like a 24% uh, strikeout rate, I think, or the slider actually maybe had that. I mean, his his fastball velocity dipped too. And I don't know why though. Right. But yeah, maybe that's a good post hype there because there was a lot of talk about him this time last year. Yeah. And now we've kind of forgotten about it. You know, uh, I love this guy. The only question I think really is opportunity. Uh, so you're talking about sort of a six starter type, but uh, Ronzi Contreras. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Uh, I that. thought, uh, you know, I, I watched him. I <laughs> saw some video. I watched... <laughs> but uh, I scouted him and uh, and it was great. No, I, I thought he came up and, and blew the doors off the engines. And yes. Siano, I, I'm a big fan of Miguel Yahure, too. So those are two guys. Just the question is, like, what are they going to do in Pittsburgh? Are they just going to kind of muddle along and, you know, you know, put those other guys in for a, a little while before? I, I heard, you know, some rumblings of, like, a Mitch Keller resurgence and uh, that, that he's changed some aspects of his pitches. And I, I'll see it. I'll believe it when I see it, I think. But uh, hmm. I, I have a feeling that they both, Ronzi and Yahure, will start in the minor leagues. But I could see them both getting sort of 75 to 100 innings. And um, it, it's been fun putting both of those guys on the back end of my draft and hold teams. Um, oh, I don't yeah. necessarily think they'll start at the beginning. But once my beginning guys get hurt, I'm hoping those guys are up and, and pitching. Yeah. Uh, I remember seeing him. Yeah. I think he had one start at the end of the year, maybe two. And yeah. Was, oh, he throws really Yeah. I think hard. he had one. Yeah. He throws yeah. really hard. He uh, has I was good like, pitches. Well, okay. I, you yeah. have my attention now. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the same thing with Yoana Don, um, the very last game of the year for the Nationals. Mm-hmm. I, I called it abandonment issues because it was abandonment issues, but I <laughs> reverse it. But, uh, but he was oh, like, I, oh, I'm not supposed to be excited about a guy on the last day of the year, but here we go. Yoana Don comes out and throws super hard and has like a good breaking ball I'm like what you're not you exist didn't know you were a thing uh but that's a good call with every Contreras. single one of Contreras's pitches was above average wow, wow. Oh, but man. it's an impossible that was like but, but it's Pittsburgh like 55 pitches now. yeah i was gonna say it was like three innings though <laughs> pittsburgh is different too though like the idea of always oh musgrove left pittsburgh and then he was fixed or I uh, Cole, like, you know, we were talking to Tyone and Tyone is like, no, they're doing much better things now. Oh, they're revamped. They I mean, they, yeah. yeah, yeah, they've got so a, maybe maybe we can be excited about a, a Pirates pitcher again um, yeah. and not name nice. coffee cakes. But I uh, <laughs> the uh, the one that I want to mention, I know it's kind of weird for me to be excited about older guys. I mean, I, I don't want to talk about Tyler Beatty. That that thing is I, mean, I am excited. You about ruined it, but, that, like, by the because way, Nick. You completely ruined like, that. 660 and it's like all right that like this is someone that should at least be considered a lot if he does have that number five job for san francisco he's been but, he's been jumping up on draft boards that's the the pollock bounce dude there's no i had several thing. i had several people i saw several people saying that they were upset that you tweeted that because everyone had their <laughs> everyone had their eye on him and I'm then you sorry. tweet that and it ruins it for everyone. Well, I mean, what am I supposed to just, do? Just don't tweet. It. Just stop. <laughs> they they that, should have just tweeted just themselves, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but I, uh, but yeah, I mean, he went up in velocity, and I love the Chamberlain was like, "Aren't you concerned about the eighteen percent walk rate from last year?" I'm like, "Of course I am." He's at six sixty. He's always uh, been bad in command too. Yeah. Right. But uh, but increased velocity, and we've liked his slider and change of combination back in the day. So we'll see what happens there. But the real one. And everyone's going to groan, but hey, the new guy in Minnesota is Dylan Bundy, who has an elite slider. Mm. It's still an elite slider to me. And maybe, you know, Minnesota says, okay, Kenta Maeda threw like 40% sliders. You can too. And maybe Which would that be a long way from Baltimore being like, you can't throw your cutter. And he's like, oh, good. It's a slider. 
<laughs> I mean, L- like, I mean, L.A. Let him do it though. Yeah, yeah the, and, and I don't think and, I think it worked out for up. a year. <laughs> but we're seeing guys like Waskari Noah and Adam Bradalzle yeah. and and uh, many others and friends uh, have slider usage way above forty percent now and have some success. And I, considering it's so far away as best pitch, I, yeah, I like it better it. than your than your crazy ass uh, Patrick Corbin stuff. <laughs> Uh, Corbin is. I think weird, Bundy man. is a health rebound, dude. Mm. I think that's all health. I think he. Yeah, I think, that's a good point. I if that's think the there's case, some, then he's like dealing with something there. He, he's going to like 450 right now. Yeah, that's an interesting one. Yeah. But it's just health, and you'll know right away, right? Yeah. I I like yeah. You know what? I'd like it better in not draft and hold. I'd ra- like it better as like a final pick in NFBC, like regular formats, right. where I could drop yeah. him after two weeks. So yeah, I'm like, exactly. nope, that's not that ain't it. That that's yeah. that's my game. That's my favorite thing ever is to see like the first week guys because you have to have those. If it's working out, great, you got a great dude. If it's not, then you can go and get a Carlos Rodon and Robbie Ray. Or at least you're in the pot, or your hand is in that pot too. So maybe you can go and grab him. Yeah, and you get those right. velo ratings in the first week that are super important. You know, yep. the oh first God. two or three start, re- uh, you know, velocity ratings are really, really important. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So hopefully we get some good stuff in there from Dylan Bundy, believe it or not. <laughs> Uh, but anyway, guys, we're over the hour now. I uh, thank you so much for being a part of this. I'm going to let you guys talk for just a moment. So, Michael, tell everybody what you're doing. Uh, yeah, you could just uh, check me out on Twitter at SP Streamer. I write for my uh, little blog that I have, spstreamer.com. Um, also a podcast as well. And then I do write once a week as well for Rotographs. And don't call it a little blog. It is an awesome site. You guys should check it out. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. A little blog. Oh, my God. You sound <laughs> you sound like uh, unappreciative parents. Um, but, but that is not what it is. No, it's a great thing. You've se- I've seen it grown over the years. It's an awesome thing that you do. Um, Thank so you. Definitely check out that. Michael Simeone's work. Um, and Eno, where are you working on, man? I write for a little blog called The Athletic. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it just sold for uh, how much? <laughs> yeah, I'm at The Athletic. Uh, we're putting together our, our draft kit. I'm still trying to uh, – there's a, a, a lot of sort of logistical needles to thread to get uh, a, a kind of a Stuff Plus app up, but I'm hoping to get that up in time uh, for this season so that people can see Stuff Plus and, and do their own research and – uh, and do some pitch type uh, stuff plus pitch type research and stuff like that. So I'm still working on that. Um, got a piece coming out uh, soon about biomechanics with Alec Lewis. Uh, you know, just working on stuff. Going to going to driveline next week. So I'm gonna oh, go nice. party in Seattle and see what they're up to. So uh, oh, that all sounds so great. Really, find me at rates so and barrels. Nice. How about that? I'll pimp rates and barrels. Uh, <laughs> Beautiful. You know, find me at rates and barrels. You don't have to pay for that. So you can find us on YouTube. You can find us wherever you find podcasts. DVR, he's got you. Don't worry. There you go. <laughs> got there. Uh, and yeah, we had Britt earlier today too. So, mm-hmm. uh, all right, guys, thank you so much for being part of this. I'm super happy we can make this happen. Uh, and yeah, we'll talk soon. Thanks, Take care. Man. See you guys.